Amen. Mm. Try some of this. It's absolutely dynamite. Oh, yeah? A child's garden of grass. Many people have smoked marijuana. Many have seen marijuana, but very few people have ever heard marijuana. The history of marijuana. Marijuana was first discovered in Twin Falls, Idaho, in 1907 by a small Polish immigrant by the name of Wayne Krolka. The discovery occurred in early May, while Wayne was working late in his study one evening, trying to find a shorter route to India. That's one small toad for man. And a giant toad for man. Guide. Acquiring marijuana. There are four basic methods of acquiring marijuana. Buying it, growing it, receiving it as a gift, and stealing it. Buying marijuana. <clears throat> yeah? I'd like a big bottle of root beer, please. Okay. And a copy of Playboy. All right. And some uh, pistachio nuts. Yeah. Could I have a cleaner copy of Playboy, please? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's kids. And a pack of marijuana, please. Oh, Mexican, Vietnamese, or domestic? Um, uh, Mexican. Flip top, flat box, off pack of bulk. Take bulk. Thank All you. right, that comes to, uh, that'll be, uh, 215. 215. Growing marijuana. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how doth your garden grow? Really great where there's no heat, and usually best when I put the seeds about a half inch underground, water lightly once a week, and hope for the best. Receiving marijuana as a gift. Getting grass as a gift is probably the nicest way of all of acquiring it. Here are a number of methods guaranteed to get you free grass. Be very, very nice to everyone you meet. Or look for people who are smoking grass. Go over and stand next to them as quietly as possible and look wistful. If they give you any, be sure to say thank you. Or... Become a narcotics officer. Or... Be a very beautiful girl with large breasts. And, if none of these methods work, then whenever you're taking a walk, look on the ground for rolled-up baggies with a rubber band around them. Stealing marijuana. Now, here's the main method for acquiring yourself some free grass. You just creep up on someone and go, Hey! Say it with that. Look up there! Right. And you cop that grass oh. and split! <laughs> The effects of marijuana. The first time a person tries to get stoned, he may not feel any effect whatsoever. Many people, even Methodists, find that after smoking for hours, particularly with good grass, they'll still feel no effect the first two or three times. For them, we recommend needlepoint, weightlifting, or any of the other traditional methods of reaching nirvana. <laughs> I can lift 347 pounds over my head, but still, nobody likes me. We believe that, except for a few weirdos here and there, everybody can feel the effects of grass. Fortunately, all the barriers which keep a person from getting high are easily overcome, once you know them. The first barrier to overcome is the belief that smoking grass gives one a kick. It does not. You do not get a kick or a rush from grass. The second barrier is that there's no way to know how you're supposed to feel. 
so you don't know what to look for. On the third barrier, there's a roadblock. Your papers, please. Uh, I only have a pipe, man. Then you'd better come with me. Creativity. It's a known fact that grass increases creativity from 8 to 11 times. In fact, everyone finds that they're more creative stoned than straight. All of us are latent Michelangelos or Carusos or Da Vinci's and think we can paint or sing or write if only we tried hard enough. Physical effects of marijuana. The first sensations may be felt instantly after having smoked some grass, or an hour after having eaten it. Usually, you creep slowly into a stoned condition, inch by inch, sliding upward, but if you've eaten it, the effects may come upon you suddenly and strike you full force in the mid of a word. <laughs> So while I was shopping at the supermarket, see, I saw this beautiful chick, really dynamite. So I was just about to use the old drop the jar of mustard on her foot ploy, you know, to meet her. And, uh, and she, um, uh, when, uh, when, um, uh, when I, uh, uh, uh when, What were we talking about? <laughs> and if the people you're talking to are stoned, they won't remember either. Uh, what uh, were you just saying? Uh, you, uh, I beg your pardon? The first sensation you'll feel will be physical. A new oh, yeah. tingling of some sort. sort of tingling, uh, a band of light sort, pressure uh, around your temples or in your shoulders or back. My, uh, you may become aware of your knees or your instep, something weird or your head seems heavy and, and my, filled my with head, chopped uh, brown paper. Seems to be filled or with, like, it chopped might feel or empty and floating farther no, about your shoulders like than it's supposed to be. Floating above my shoulder, you might also become aware of your anus or to. genitalia. There's some other things, too. You'll also discover that grass is an analgesic and, like ordinary pain relievers, can cure headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. So remember... M-A-R-I-J-U? A-J-U-A-N-A. Marijuana. Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Psychological effect. 
Sometimes the early psychological changes coincide with the early physical changes experienced while stoned, but the famous mind expansion comes after the famous physical sensations. Grass heightens and distorts. For example, profound revelations. You may think you have profound revelations, only to discover later that they are none too profound. For example, profound revelation number one. Survival of the species is everybody's business. Profound revelation number two. No matter how much you may dislike pickles, it is, after all, the only thing you can do with cucumbers. What may cause this magnification of the importance of certain things is that your mind seems to be racing along and sometimes you find a lot. number of levels at once simultaneously. There is also the fact that you tend to forget everything almost as soon as it happens and certain thoughts seem to take on secondary and even tertiary. Hey and man, what are you talking about? I think I forgot. Let's listen in on a quiet scene in The Little House Down the Street. Andy and Virginia are very stoned and are spending the evening listening to their collection of old records and giggling a lot. Let's listen. <laughs> I'm all discombobulated and for shimmel. Are you hungry? Hungry? No, no. Oh, wait a minute now. Did you, did you mean am I hungry for food or am I hungry in the abstract? Am I hungry for knowledge or adventure? <laughs> <laughs> it's my own humor. <laughs> what, what were we talking about? You asked if I was hungry. Oh, did I? Well, yes. Well, are uh, yeah. Am I what? <laughs> Am I what? I don't even know my own name. <laughs> Time and space. Your awareness of time and space also becomes confused. Things seem to take an unearthly long time, although much less often things which should have taken a long time seem to have zipped by in an instant. Zipping takes an instant. Unzipping seems to take forever. Come on, honey. Come on. Oh! Shut up! Space alteration is totally unpredictable. Sometimes the room looks longer, and sometimes the room looks shorter. Sometimes the ceiling seems to be three floors above you, or only an inch from your head. Oh, geez, son of a bitch. Maybe there will be no space alteration in your room whatsoever, but get up and walk down a flight of stairs, and that flight of stairs becomes infinite. Time disorientation can sometimes cause you needless concern. Who hasn't experienced having his girlfriend say that she's going to the kitchen for some coke? I'm going to the kitchen. Okay. With some coke. And then not see her again for two days. I wonder whatever happened to, uh, what's her name? After thinking she's accidentally locked herself in the refrigerator or been spirited away by Chinese people, you run into the kitchen and yell, What's the matter? Gloria! Gloria, what's the matter? <laughs> I'm locked in the refrigerator! Only to realize she's been gone less than a minute. Getting hung up. 
Small tasks and insignificant things can take on a tremendous importance and interest. Often you find yourself doing some little thing over and over, like picking lint off your dog or staring at a tiny, tiny spot on the wall or playing with something like this little microphone button here that doesn't seem to have very much of a purpose, really, except that it makes a funny noise whenever I push it. You know? Get the hunking, get, get hung up, taking all that. Time disorientation and hung upness act together quite often, and you find yourself doing something inane for a long time and thoroughly enjoying it, even though every now and then you think you've been doing it forever. When you're doing something really dumb, like watching Queen for a Day or The Flying Nun on TV, another symptom is revealed. After staring like idiots at the show for 18 minutes, someone will ask, <laughs> What are we watching this for? Oh, 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 oh. come on, come on, come on. God, that guy's doing a ballet. Berlin Husky and Rom Wood, 1957. It's rotten, man. It's just terrible. Rom Wood was the monster, right? You put them all down no, there. No, Rom Wood was the actor. That's no. ridiculous. Well, change it, change it. Oh. What, um... Wait, didn't you just... Hmm? I thought you flicked the mm. yeah. You know what this oh. is? Oh. <laughs> what is that, guy? <laughs> no, what is it? Bridge Hoser's oh, Holiday, 1933. Who's? Bridge Hoser's Holiday. The Sterling Lloyd film, one of the old, the first Lloyd. Oh, it's great. Why don't you flick really the, uh, the green on <laughs> so his uh, shoes are purple? <laughs> Yeah, Let me see what else. Oh, come on. Oh. You really like this? Look, look, I'll flick them You'll all turn and nod at whoever asked the question, then resume your show watching, all together, until the show is concluded. Why? Because a basic truth about being stoned is that everything, even television, is good. You must learn to be careful of this. Funniness. This is one of the most pleasant and exciting psychological changes which occurs. Take this, this little spot in your mind which tells you when something is funny, you know? And grass expands that little spot until that little spot takes over. And everything is funny. I mean, <laughs> everything. You know? Your friend's teeth are a riot. A simple hello brings on storms of laughter. <laughs> and something which is genuinely funny, like a good joke or a Marx Brothers movie, can turn you into a compulsive oh, yeah. maniac, <laughs> writhing in agony and pleading for help. I know this is true because I just got back from a small town. In fact, the town was so small that when I plugged in my electric shaver, the trolley stopped. <laughs> my room was so small that the mice were stoop-shouldered. <laughs> That's why I say... Let me entertain you, because that's all I want to do. Get there! Let's hear it for our great metal comic, a funny guy, Jimmy Burney. Let's bring him out again, folks. What do you say? And here he comes, folks. A big hand, big hand, Jimmy Burney. Meditation. Meditation is a method of discovering hidden aspects of the world that are of oneself or of transcending reality in order to reach a higher spiritual state. One method of accomplishing this is to concentrate for long period of time on a specific theme or subject or on a meaningless word, a mantra. A mantra is meaningless in and of itself, but it has a magical, mystic value. I will give you your own mantra, but remember this is a personal mantra 
And you mustn't telling anyone else what it is. Your secret mantra is un yeliman. Un yeliman. Now say it now. Un yeliman. Un yeliman. It's very beautiful. Now, first sit on the floor or on your bed with your foot cross and your hand in your lap. Sitting up straight, taking a deep breath and relax, letting the mind wander for a while as it usually does. And when you find a space in your thinking which seems sort of quiet, start saying the mantra. Un Yeleman. Stress the first syllable very hard and keep saying it over and over. And if you're having to scratching or to move, you may do so, but no matter what is happening in your mind, keep saying the mantra and concentrate on it for as long as you can. And soon, at Dublin, you will find that the passage of time is no longer known by you. And it will become to feel as though you are adrift in the cosmic void. And though you might be frightened at first to be so alone in the cosmic void, then you will hear the sound of many, many voices. And they will all be saying, Un Yeleman. And it will be the sound of the great cosmic brotherhood. It will be all of us. It will be you, and you, and you, and myself. We're all saying the wonderful word of Un Yeleman. Joining together with our hands and taking this wonderful message that we have to not only this place, but into the other place. And soon to the next one. And then after that, we will go to the world and we will tell the world the secret wonderful joy of Un Yeleman. And the world will become ours. And we will rule the world under the mystical power of Un Yeleman. Now we get to the most important things which grass alters and through alteration enhances. These things are three. <laughs> the holy three. And they are eating food, listening to music, and making love, you dig? Eating food. Eating becomes a joy unbounded. All food tastes far out. If you open a box or a bag of stuff like uh, Abba Zabba bars or dried figs or something, you'll start eating and eating until someone happens along and pulls the bag or box out of your hand. Hey. At which point you might dash to the refrigerator. And start eating lettuce and leftover pieces of fried squash. I'm left in the refrigerator. Music. Listening to music while stoned is a whole new world. Most heads consider its importance second only to sex. And grass will change your musical habits for the better, even when you listen later when you're not stoned. Besides classical music, there are other types which are also delightful to listen to while stoned. Folk. Acid rock. Electronic and jazz. But there are some kinds of music which you must never, ever listen to. For example, you should never, ever listen to Myron Florin music. Or Dick Contino music. Or how is the year old for music? Uh, 
Unless, of course, they're all playing together. A feeling which occurs quite often and rather strongly while stoned is a thing called sex. For this reason, it's a good idea not to get stoned unless you have a girl with you. Unless you already are a girl. If you already are a girl. Hi there. The music in the room, or the murmurings of your friend, are not just an audio delight, but a physical sensation. Yeah. Oh, gee, I'm glad you like this. Let me turn on the light. Yeah. Uh, gee, uh, come, on, come on over here and sit oh, down. And, yeah. You delight to Jesus Christ. I couldn't wait to get out of that place where the record player was so loud it was sitting right over there right but it was blasting in my ears I sit down over here make yourself comfortable feels good yeah here's, good. A, here's another pillow uh, yeah. gee, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, that you ca uh, came out <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. it was really nice uh, just yeah. walking in there with you there yeah. uh, it's, it's uh, good to get quiet again yeah, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <sighs> uh, can I get you some uh, some wine or maybe something to uh, oh, something? Oh yeah, to yeah, that'd be good. Oh uh, great, man! I I, uh, I got some um, some Japanese wine yeah, that really uh, really can really stone you out. Uh, just puts the edge on everything. You drink it warm, and it's 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 really out of sight. <laughs> yeah, you really gotta <laughs> dig it. Water? Oh yeah, so you know about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get, you get, you know, you get it in Japanese restaurants. <laughs> it's uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here, why don't you drink it out of this little oh. cup? Oh, I got some hashish too. Oh, some hashish. Oh, fantastic. Uh, uh hashish. Uh, that means I got a. No, I got a, I got a pipe. Oh, oh, you got a pipe. Great. Um, okay, let's. Uh, Gee whiz, I'm, I'm really glad you came in. It's, uh, uh, you want if I uh, uh, put it in the pipe and... and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, go group. ahead. Oh, thank it. you. Yeah, well, I'm really glad you... Uh, oh, it really good. worked out, didn't it? Yeah. Isn't that wine delicious? Yeah, this is nice. Oh, it's fantastic. It feels good on your lips. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> oh. <sighs> Great. Yeah, this is, this is good. Great, sir. <sighs> oh yeah, yeah, dynamite, dynamite stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, did you have your uh, palm read before? Oh, can you read my yeah, palm? Yeah, yeah. Let me read your palm. Far oh, out. Far out. You really got a far out lifeline. Really far out lifeline. Yeah, look at the way it, it travels right up your arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, really, really. Really incredible. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keeps right on going. Uh, yeah, it does it. <laughs> it just keeps right on going. The smell of your friend's hair, or the warm, soothing touch of his or her body, or the curve of a cheekbone. All these separate sensations swirl and mix together into a whole, an avatar, a divinity incarnate. <laughs> yeah. And the sensual delight of your own body, and the glorious splendor of the setting all fuse together and you and your friend and the whole world become a chasm of jubilation for minute after minute 
after minute, until seemingly a millennium has passed and time has lost all claim to meaning. And the multitude and the intermixture of your responses which you experience preparatory to and during the sex act seem to recur again and again and again, like the infinite number of images produced when you stand between two mirrors. And they begin to reproduce themselves and intertwine with one another, growing and building until you experience revelations of feeling so poignant that you can examine each pinpoint of pleasure and so overpowering that the entirety of it thrusts you into a maelstrom of pure ecstatic energy. I really dig when you do that. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Why didn't you ask me? I, I, I really dig doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spiro? Yeah? You do love me, don't you? Oh, baby. Just, just keep doing that. <laughs> Games. Virtually every mental activity which one engages in when stoned may be lumped into the broad category of games, partly because everything seems like a game when you're stoned, and partly because the competition and excitement of playing games becomes heightened and validly reflects our entire life struggle. Can you dig it? It is a truism that games which add another dimension to your life and grass which heightens all feelings will, when mixed together, create an exciting and enriching experience. You missed that pass, Henderson! What happened? Sorry, Coach. I slipped on the grass. Well, folks, we'll be back in a minute with more excitement right after this word. There are two basic game kingdoms, physical games and intellectual games. A few games, of course, fall in both categories, such as stick quiz. This is a simple game played with a leader and one or more players. The leader asks a question of one of the other players, and if the player doesn't know the answer, the leader hits him with a stick. Outdoor game. When it comes to the physical games, there are but two things to remember. Keep them simple and bear in mind the problems with space and time which you'll have. Mumbly Peg and Russian Roulette, and for that matter, all games involving knives or guns are out for obvious reasons. How about that, Jerry? Well, Vinny, you know, playing croquet while stone can be an extra beautiful trip. Sometimes you think you're a member of English aristocracy, and sometimes you think you're God. Right you are, Jerry. Well, folks, we'll be back in a minute with more excitement right after this word. And now, today's outdoor sport. Mrs. Eileen Simmon of Phoenix, Arizona. You win that beautiful, all-immersible pop-up toaster and, of course, compliments of our sponsor, a full key of always mild, always wild Cincinnati off-white marijuana. Indoor games. Listen, outdoor games are all right, uh, but uh, they lack the intellectual challenge, the imagery, the super-worldliness of your indoor games. Uh, the intellectual level of the games which will be most fun when you are stoned will depend on how stoned you are. If you are very, very stoned, see, you might have trouble playing or find your foot or uh, peekaboo. But if you can maintain a normal level of awareness 
a myriad of uh, games are available to you, which present uh, the new excitement and uh, challenges, which you never uh, would have guessed existed. You know what I mean? Children's games, such as pick-up sticks, finger painting, and tinker toys, are excellent. Board games like Monopoly, Scrabble, and Parcheesi are fun, too. But games of thought and talk <clears throat> are the very best. And now, once again, it's time to play Make a Sentence! For those of you at home who haven't watched before, here's how we play. A group of people sit in a circle, and each in turn says a word, one word, in turn, until a complete sentence is formed. Are you ready, panel? Yes, sir. Let's demonstrate. <clears throat> Grass distinguishes itself from all other chemicals that purport inwardly to euphorically stimulate and enlighten those members of society which prefer habitually drug rolled material in forms that sequentially often produce excessive hallucinations whereas some marijuana has often cost less than a I have the report on Operation Intercept, Mr. President. It's a huge success. Uh, then you've stopped the uh, flow of Mary Giwana. <laughs> Completely. Tourist traffic hasn't moved in days. The president of Mexico is threatening to break off diplomatic relations. Not only that, we seized three joints. Uh, <laughs> joints. Now, now let, 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 me, let me understand that. Now, now what are joints? Oh, You've you got to be kidding, sir. <laughs> Jones, I never kid. Uh, I have a wonderful sense of humor, and I tell <laughs> hilarious jokes, but I never kid. <laughs> now, what is a joint? Uh, a joint, sir, is a marijuana cigarette. I always thought they were called roofers. <laughs> Uh, well, sir, here are the three uh, roofers we confiscated. <laughs> they retail for about 50 cents a piece. Now, uh, Jones, let me say this. If I gave you 50 cents... <laughs> uh, sir, I, I brought these uh, roofers with me because the department thought it would be a good idea if you tried one before you drafted your drug bill. We felt that you might have more insight into the problem if you turned on. Uh, I turned on whom? <laughs> uh, well, turning on means to get high. I am hep. <laughs> now, let's have one of those joints, baby. Here. Hmm. Uh, that's good. Uh, sir, you're not supposed to eat it. <laughs> you smoke it. I've already swallowed it. Uh, uh, give me another one. All right. Here, now, now, sir, when I light it, you're supposed to inhale like this. And you hold the smoke in your lungs as long as possible. Uh, let's go, Jones. I'm, I'm getting up close. <laughs> You mean up tight? Whatever, oh. come on, light my fire! There we go. I swallowed that one too. <laughs> oh boy, here's, a, here's another one, sir. It's already lit. Uh, uh, how do you feel, sir? Uh, I feel wonderful. Uh, uh, 
this is heavy grass. <laughs> It must be Acapulco Gold. <laughs> uh, Jones, I believe I'm beginning to uh, hallucinate. But, sir, you're not supposed to hallucinate on pot. Don't tell me. I hallucinate on Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Tell me, sir, uh, what, what, what do you see? Well, it's beautiful, Jones. I see spacious skies and fruited plains. <laughs> and amber waves of grain. Wait a minute, now I see colors. Colors! Uh, red, white, and blue, sir? No, no, I, I see brown. Terrible, depressing brown. I see Pat Brown, and he's winning. He's going to be the governor of California. Are you all right, sir? Jones, I think I'm having a bum voyage. Look, just relax, sir. I'm here with you. Wait a second. Uh, ev ev everything's changed. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm in a big house, uh, in, in a big, big office. That's right, sir. You, you're right here, where you've always wanted to be, and you're in charge. You mean? Yes. No. Yes. Then I made it. I actually made it at last. I'm governor of California. <laughs> We have the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, and a new one for 1968, the Pod Party. Make me President of the United States, and I promise you, I will be ahead. fellow Americans, and I promise you, I shall make the clap a childhood yeah. disease. Yeah. Make me president of the United States, and I promise you I'll pine every chicken. Yeah. Make me president, and I won't even tell him I'm Jewish. I promise you more foreign aid without taxes to Mexico. We will buy more marijuana from them. Yeah. I like marijuana, you like marijuana, we like marijuana too. A marijuana, marijuana. Runaway God to leave home for marijuana. Remember the teeny bob sniffing airplane clue. Marijuana. He used to freak out and send to Fox too. Marijuana. I want to get high, but I never know why. Here comes the God by God to say goodbye for marijuana. Push a car to get you high on marijuana. It's my life and I do what I want. Marijuana. It's my life and 
I do what I can't. Marijuana. I want to smoke pot and I want to smoke a lot. But here comes my father, the marijuana guy. The bank can count the higher the head Marrow, marijuana I want to get down and I want to be alone But here comes my father, the family is mourning A marrow, marijuana Marrow, marijuana Marrow, marijuana Marrow, marijuana I like marijuana Bye-bye.